In this video, we're going to talk about current assets. Now, if you take a look at a balance sheet, you'll see that assets are broken out into a current portion, and then you have a non-current portion. You might be wondering, well, what does this mean, whether an asset uh, is current or non-current? So a current asset is basically an asset that we expect to turn into cash within one year, so in less than one year, or the operating cycle within the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Okay, now that might sound a little convoluted, so let me give you an example. Uh, so let's say you had a construction firm, and the construction firm, the, the operating cycle uh, for this firm uh, to do a project from start to finish and, and collect all the cash is 18 months. So then we say, okay, if something is expected to turn into cash within one year or the operating cycle, which in this case is 18 months, and we take the longer of the two, well, 18 months is longer than one year, so in that case, anything that the firm expects to turn into cash within that 18 month time frame, that would be a current asset. So let me give some examples, and, and, and it might be a little bit easier to understand once we walk through some types of current assets. Um, so, so some types of current assets that you'll see on a balance sheet. Now cash, obviously is the most liquid because cash already is cash. It doesn't need to turn into cash. But also when you see cash on a balance sheet, uh, sometimes they'll even say and cash equivalents. Or that might not be mentioned, but it's, it's implied. So cash equivalents, we're just talking about things that are highly liquid investments uh, that have like a maturity in less than three months. Uh, so this isn't some kind of speculative investment. This is basically something that's almost as good as cash, and they just go ahead and say cash and cash equivalents. Uh, so that's that's a, a current asset. And then also uh, short-term investments. Now we're not talking about this within three months and highly liquid variety. Uh, now we're talking about uh, three different things. And, and let me just I'll change colors here. So we think about uh, held to maturity securities. Uh, so like a bond, for example. Uh, we also think about available for sale securities. We also think about trading securities, a stock that the, the firm intends uh, to trade for a profit. So short-term investments are, are, are also uh, a current asset. And then we also have uh, receivables is a very common uh, current asset, particularly accounts receivable. I'll just abbreviate that A slash R, accounts receivable. So that's basically uh, somebody owes us money. There's some kind of oral promise to pay. So we sold something to a customer uh, and they owe us money. And then there's also note receivable, which is basically a written promise to pay from one of our customers. Uh, we, we made a sale. They didn't pay us cash. They're going to. We expect that within one year of the operating cycle. Uh, so, so that's going to be classified as a, as a current asset. And then, of course, inventory. We would expect that we're going to be selling our inventory uh, within one year or the length of our operating cycle. And if we don't expect to, to sell our inventory during that time, then we need to take a write down anyway. So when you see inventory, uh, it's going to be a, a current asset. And then now it's a little unintuitive, but prepaid expenses. Uh, are also classified as a current asset. Now you might be thinking, okay, so we've we've prepaid, let's say, our insurance for six months. So let's say we pay, you know, six hundred dollars or something for insurance for six months. Now, how is that? That's not going to turn into cash uh, within a year or the operating cycle. We actually paid out cash. Uh, so what's going on here? And well, kind of the reasoning for including prepaid expenses uh, a as an asset. Um, is that we're basically saying, okay, when we've got this prepaid expense, we're going to capitalize it, call it prepaid insurance, let's say. We're going to call that an asset, and we're going to say that this asset, if we hadn't prepaid for that, then it would require the use of cash within the next few months or within the next year operating cycle. It would require the use of cash, and therefore, in kind of this roundabout way, we should be including uh, prepaid insurance. I actually actually shouldn't be saying expense. Let's think of it as prepaid insurance or prepaid whatever the expense is. Uh, we should be including that as a current asset. So really these are the five most common types of, of current assets. And just remember that it's something that we expect to turn into cash 
uh, within the next year or the operating cycle, whichever happens to be longer. Now, when we think about, well, why is it important to even kind of make this de determination between current assets and long-term assets, you know, why do we care? Well, the idea being that current assets give us kind of an idea of liquidity. So how, how, how able is this firm to, to meet its obligations, to, to pay its debt, right? They've got bills coming due. So if you have a firm with, with a lot of current assets, uh, but then they might be in a good position to, to meet their current liabilities. Uh, and so there's even a ratio for that that we call the, the current ratio. And that kind of gives us a gauge of, okay, the bills that are going to be coming due in the next year, how liquid is the firm? Are they going to be able uh, to meet these short-term debts? Are they going to have problems paying the bills and keeping the lights on at the factory, so to speak? So if we had a firm that didn't have a lot of current assets and most of their assets were, were non-current, then that's not really a liquid firm in the sense that if they have a lot of current liabilities, a lot of bills coming due in the next year, and they just have a bunch of non-current assets, well, those things uh, aren't going to be turned to cash in the next year or the operating cycle, uh, so the firm might be having trouble meeting its short-term obligations and, and continuing to operate. 